Welcome to DriverChin.com. Today we're going to take a look at using Corel Painter 2016 on the Surface Book. So I have my Surface Book here. I have it set up in an inverted setup with the screen covering the keyboard. I'm not going to be using the keyboard at all, so I'm going to be strictly using the pen and touch. So first things first, before we really get started, you want to go to the settings and the, the start menu here and run the Surface program. And if you're not familiar with it, Surface, the Surface program lets you tweak the settings for pen pressure. And it's important because not everyone likes the, the, the same feel uh, for the pen. So what you get, like I have a little bit of a curve here because I want a little bit of pressure to get a, a darker stroke. So I can kind of go light and then press a little bit to get a darker stroke. Now some people might want more or less, so I highly recommend using this tool to tweak it so that you have the best experience you can possibly have. Uh, other things to consider is I have the, the NVIDIA N940 drivers installed. Uh, the, these are the official ones that come from NVIDIA. Uh, there, if you saw my previous video, there's a bit of a tweak to kind of get that to work. Uh, you may or may not need to have that. I'm not sure if it makes that big of a difference. But I, what I did is uh, in the control panels here for NVIDIA control panels, I set up a, uh, a setting for Painter uh, to tell to use integrated graphics. Uh, it even though the Surface Book has the NVIDIA dedicated GPU, it doesn't seem to really help out that much. And, and uh, even with Photoshop, it didn't do a very good job helping out with Photoshop. So sadly, the, the safest thing to do is to drop it back to integrated graphics. And that's what I did here. So let's run the program. All right, so I'm going to run Corel Painter. And if you've uh, never used Painter before, uh, the big draw with Painter is its natural media tools. It has an extensive library of natural media tools to simulate oil paints, watercolors, uh, gouache, pastels, airbrushes, whatever. It has all those kind of capabilities. It's, it, its strength is, is all the natural media stuff. So we launched the program the first time. The, the, your, well, this is the welcome screen. There are a couple of options here for learning. So there's some commercial and free resources available to learn the various different aspects of the tool. Uh, there's uh, content here for if you want to buy additional brushes, because once again, brushes are the strong point in a painter. Uh, lots of different ones out here for additional effects for painting, uh, for uh, fine arts, for flames, uh, as well as different lighting effects. So it's all very, very neat thing, things you can buy. They're about 25 bucks each. I've, never, I've not purchased any yet, so I can't say for sure how good they are. But for judging from the, the sample images over here, it's some pretty cool stuff. So the Getting Started page here gives, gives you some options for setting up your workspace, as well as options for creating new documents. And if you really want to take a look at uh, other people's work, there's an Inspired tab to see what other folks have created in Painter. And for me, it's kind of depressing because I'm nowhere near as these people. So it's kind of interesting. You can use it to get inspired or depressed. Depends how you look at it. So we'll go to Get Started, and we'll just create a new image. And we'll just go with the defaults. The defaults are 1600 by 900 at 150 DPI. Uh, with a white color background and this kind of grainy texture. And so there's a bunch of different textures you can choose for paper as well. And I suppose you, I think you can change them uh, on the fly as well, which is kind of interesting. So you can actually get some really interesting texture work going on for it. We'll just use the defaults and we'll create a new document. And so there it is. As if, you, if you've used Photoshop before, the UI is very Photoshop-like. You have your toolbars on the side, you have some menu options up on the top, and you have your color wheel uh, as well as the layers pa palette over here. So it's very, if you use Photoshop, like I said, it's going to be very familiar for you. So we can double tap the, the title bar to get the whole thing zoomed in. And this is where the touch gestures come in. Uh, oh, before I even do that, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that before you even use the program, you have to go to the preferences. So Painter was made to really work with Wacom tablets, and this is not a Wacom. This is an Intrigue pen, so we have to tell it uh, how to work. So uh, first things first, you go to the tablet settings under preferences, so edit preferences under the tablet settings. You need to tell it to, uh, first things first, tablet options is defaulted to Wacom compatible. We are not that. We have to choose a second option for RTS compatible device. And then under the multi-touch options, we want to uh, select the second option, which is the Windows multi-touch. Because without those, this is useless. Next thing you want to do uh, for performance, uh, I mean, for the interface, is uh, I turned, by default, enhanced brush ghost is on. And what that does is it gives you a bit of a more of a uh, real-time, realistic view of what the brush is like. And one of the interesting things that you would do, you would get if you have a Wacom tablet is you would get tilt. Unfortunately, entries do not have tilt. So you don't have the option to, to, to use the pen in these kind of cool configurations. It's just not there. It's pretty much 
that straight down. So uh, the, you don't really need to have that on, so you save yourself some performance by not using that. And we just simply use the brush ghost, which will basically show an outline of what our brush is. So that's kind of handy to have, and that will save you a little bit of performance there. So it's okay. So here we are. So the one thing I'm going to preface it is that the um, uh, the touch gestures aren't that great. I, I don't know if it's an issue with Corel or if it's a Microsoft driver issue, but uh, if you see the, the pinch zoom options here, it's really kind of chunky. Uh, and then the, the, the tilting mechanism is a bit kind of, it's okay once you get it going, but it's, but it's also on the chunky side. And then moving it around is kind of like that. It's not fantastic, but luckily you don't have to really use the touch gestures for that if you don't want to. You have the, the hand tools here, and then you know, the, the zoom options uh, in the toolbar. So uh, you don't really necessarily have to have those. But um, you know, it's one of those kind of conveniences that I wish worked a little bit better. But like I said, I don't know if it's a if it's a Corel thing or if it's an uh, you know if it's a driver issue of some sort. So we'll just get started and just do some work. Now I'm going to say that this is not a tutorial for how to use a program because I am not that good with it. I've played with it for for a couple of days and it's just a lot of fun to play with. Uh, I think it's one of those kind of programs like Photoshop where you just kind of play around with it for a while to get used to it. But um, So if you want more in-depth tutorials, this is not it. This is just going to be showing how the program performs on the Surface Book. All right, so first things first, we have the layers. I want to create a new layer to, to work with on top of the canvas. And this is this part right here is the, the, the guts of the program. This is going to be all the different various brush types you can you can get broken into different categories here. You have like the acrylics, you have airbrushes, you have um, this kind of weird audio expression thing which is kind of new uh, apparently. that it, uh, You can listen to a music file and it'll actually kind of use the wave of the music to kind of get the uh, uh, expressions for brush size and stuff. It's really kind of cool uh, but I have not really played with it. I've seen some people do some work with it. It's very cool. Um, there's other things like chalks and uh, crayons. Uh, there's dynamic speckles, erasers, and various different things here. So it's lots of different things you can play with. But I'm going to go and play with digital watercolors. Let's see, where are they? So digital watercolors. There's actually two types of things. There's digital, digital watercolor, which is simulated. Then they have um, these um, real watercolors, which is a little more computational heavy. They give you a bit more um, realism for them. So we're going to go with the digital because uh, you know I'm, I don't want to push it that hard. So we're going to use a... Um, Use a broad, we're going to use this broad water brush here. And we'll choose a little bit of a blue color here, we'll do some sky work maybe, we'll make a little sky. So, as you can see, I'm going lightly, and you know, you see a little blue coming in, in the play. If I press hard, you get that. Uh, so, it will, um, it, you know, the pressure is at least useful. So, you, so you, you can kind of adjust things as you need to. Uh, press a little harder to get some more texture going like that. So and so, you know, response-wise, it's actually quite responsive in that sense. There, so I get so, so I kind of got this weird thing going here. Um, we can do that. Is let's see, I'm making another layer. I'll move it down. Let's get let's get a little bit of ground layer going here. How's that sound? Let's just get a little bit of a. Uh, ooh, how about a little bit of a um, brownish color, like a little, little kind of a brown color thing here. And I'll kind of just kind of go through here and get some round cover going. And what, what you can do is you can use some other brushes here. I can use like oil paints. Oils. Hey, oils. Let's uh, let's go with this here. Ah, oh, it's too small. I'll do the brush stroke. So what's kind of nice is that, is that even though these are kind of small, if you just click on, I'll click in the area here to kind of get the, the brush, you can actually then just roll and the brush size will increase with it. So I can you, you can you can be like Bob Ross. So with this program, whoops, <laughs> gotta be careful about getting, getting too too much uh, too close to the edges for some of those windows gestures to get in the way. So we got that. So you know, that's fine and dandy, it's kind of boring. But let's let's play with some of the really nifty things like like particles. The particle brushes are really kind of cool. So uh, there's these really nifty ones that you can if you roll over each one, it kind of gives you a little bit of a of a view of what it sort of does. And this uh, this flow first sprayer is kind of fun. And what we're going to do is there's some settings over here for the size, opacity, you can make a glow, there's this uh, um, randomization chaos thing you can do to, to, to kind of give it more, more, uh, a little more variety. Let's add some grass. Let's go and do some grass work. Let's do that here. Let's see, I'm going to make a new layer on top of this and we'll kind of go, go and see what happens. 
So the harder you press, the darker it is. So just, just from just kind of just playing around, uh, you know, I have a nice little landscape coming up. So one thing also you can say, like, well, you know, the, uh, this is the, this is too, you know, the, the brown's too much. Well, what you can do is you can go down here and you lower the opacity if you want. You get a little bit of, a little lighter opacity there. It gets into the, whatever comes through. Whoops, I'm drawing on the wrong layer. There we go. Get a little more, maybe a lighter color here. Get some, some variation in the, in the grass. So there, so I guess I got some grass going over here. All right. And... Well, let's see what else can we do. Oh, well, how about how about uh, some of the particle stuff? This is pretty cool. There's the there is an interesting one here called uh, Spring Flame Glow Two. Yeah, and so what it's gonna do is it's gonna draw flames, or at least particles that 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 you can use to represent flames. So you can choose different colors here. I'm gonna choose uh, like a yellowish for the for the background, and I'm gonna go with uh, like a red. For the foreground, and I'm making new layers so I don't mess up the ones I have right now. I'll put this above the sky here. Let's just see what we can do. Let's see. I'll draw. Let's see. Go right. And if I hold this down a little bit more, it's gonna should bleed through. I'm trying to think. Why is it uh, kind of whitish instead? Well, oh, there we go. It's kind of thin through. Hmm. I'm not sure why it's white. It's kind of funny. Hmm. Well, let's uh, let's see. Well, not really sure why it came out it came out that way, but well, let's let's go with some. How about some green? Some green fireballs. Then how's that sound? Or how about the green in the middle? Nah, it's still, still white in the middle there. Well, all right, uh, all right. I'm not too sure what's going on there, but the the you know, once again, I'm not a really expert at this program, so I'm not really doing a tutorial for how to use it. I'm just kind of goofing around. Um, then of course you can use the erasers. Now erasers work here as well. You can actually flip this around and use an eraser, um, and you see that the, the the tool changes that way. I can change the brush size. And kind of get uh, some some different effects there. That's a bit of a too much of a brush size there. I can scroll it down a little bit so that's a big. So so the, the eraser does work, which is nice. That's one of the nice things you get with the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book is the eraser. So there are lots of other erasers you can use as well. Um, and then if you want to get more creative, you can use real watercolors and. These are a bit more processor intensive, but they produce some very interesting effects. So if I want to do like a splatter dry, let's see what that looks like. I'll make them a little bit bigger. So you can see that uh, when I roll over, the, the cursor kind of shows what it's going to look like. I'm making a new layer on top of this. And let's we'll choose like, how about uh, something a little bit different on the color side? How about the purple color here? Oh, it's red still. Let's uh, flip the color around here. Here we go. So you have these kind of effects going. So you can use it for clouds, actually. Hey, let's do clouds. Let's do that. Let's see. Luckily, it has a nice undo history. Sadly, there's no button for undo uh, on here, as far as I can tell. There's no, there's no quick key for that. Uh, not, unless you have a keyboard. So as, as far as being totally touch friendly, it's uh, Corel Painter still not quite there. Hopefully, the, they'll improve that with time. But they'll, uh, you know, now that touches so much more part of our computing world. All right, so we'll just choose a nice white color. And there. So now we can do some some, some clouds. Maybe. Let's see. All right, what's going on here? Well, that's not what I want. Hmm. All right, I'm not sure why it's doing that, not letting me do that. Uh, how about... All right, there we go. Hmm. 
Uh, maybe it's because it doesn't, but oh, well, maybe it's, it's because white is not going to work for it. I think that's why. Um, how do we go with oils? Oils might, might give us something more more fun to play with. Or, well, let's go back to watercolors. Let's just do the uh, splatter dry, and then we'll use this like a, like a, let's go with a kind of a funny color here. There you go. So we'll put these up here. So there, put those there. So yeah, sorry about that. I, I'm not sure exactly what the, I'm not familiar with enough to, to know why the white didn't work. I'm thinking it's because it's partly the, for transparency purposes. So it's, I'm painting a transparent thing, which doesn't really help very much. So, all right, there you have it. Um, you see, Painter runs quite well on the, on the surface book. Uh, the only thing is the touch gestures are kind of weird, but once again, you don't really need them. You have the uh, tools here to zoom in and zoom out. Um, it, it, for the most part, you don't really need a, a keyboard but if you want to play with these, but there are hotkeys uh, like spacebar probably will give you the, the hand and those kind of things. So you may want to have a, a Bluetooth keyboard handy if you're going to work in this in this way. Um, it, it probably will be handy only because even, because even with uh, in clipboard when we take the screen off, you're going to be without a keyboard. So having something a little small keyboard handy would be a good thing to have. It'll just enhance the experience. But in general, the program works really, really well. Um, you know, uh, barring the, the touch gestures, uh, there's no re no real reason why you can't use this program on here. So it runs. And the pen is quite nice. Uh, even though it's not a Wacom, it, it doesn't give you the, the added benefits of tilt. But for the most part, it does it does work. And, and it, it um, works quite well. So if you have any questions, you know, let me know. Uh, you know feel, feel free to leave some comments. I hope you liked the video. Please like it. And subscribe. Thanks for watching.